What's going on everybody? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Today's video is going to be on density altitude. Real quick, just want to mention that the Part-Time Pilot Ground School is open, so just go to parttimepilot.com to learn more about that. So let's get started. When we set our altimeter setting to 29.92 on our altimeter, we get a pressure altitude and we use this to reference altitudes on charts and figures, okay? When a pressure altitude is corrected for non-standard temperatures, so that 2992, we set that, that's the pressure we're setting, and then we get a pressure altitude, and when we compare that to charts, all those pressures on the charts, they're assuming a standard temperature. Okay, but that's not always the case. So when we correct that altitude for non-standard temperature, so when it's not 15 degrees Celsius, we get a density altitude. We need density altitudes in order to in order to understand how exactly our aircraft is going to perform in a given set of atmospheric conditions. Okay, so when the temperature changes, it affects the density of the air, and the density affects the performance of our aircraft. So this is why we need density altitude. So density is mass per volume. So density equals mass divided by volume. Or in other words, it's a measure of how crowded an amount of air is with air molecules. So if these red circles are air molecules and we have this container here, a less dense volume of or container of air would have less mass in it, right? So there's only nine air molecules. A more dense one would have more mass in it. So more mass means this figure up here is getting bigger, means the density would get bigger. So more mass per unit volume, more density, more air molecules, more density. Flying through more dense air is like swimming through more dense water. More dense water, like salt water, which is more dense than fresh water, in the Mediterranean Sea is easier to swim because you float more. So I'm sure you guys have heard that you can float more in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, that's because it has more salt content and it's more dense. So your body has more molecules to, to push up on you and keep you floating. Okay, so flying is exactly like that. So flying in more dense air is easier for the aircraft. The density of the air we fly in affects the lift created by our wings. Okay, so there's more molecules per unit volume to bounce off our wings. In Newton's third law, every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So there's more molecules for that law to create an upward force of lift. The thrust created by our aircraft's propeller, same thing. A propeller is just a wing, you know, on a different plane. So the propellers are cutting through more molecules of air, creating more thrust. And the efficiency of combustion inside our aircraft's engine, every combustion process is fuel mixed with oxygen or air and then a spark. So when you have more air, you can get more combustion efficiency from that. Okay, so we know that more density is better to fly in and less density is not as good to fly in, so less performance. So what are some of the things that can change the density of the air? So as a pilot, we got to know what affects the density of the air. Well, temperature is the most common cause of a change in density altitude. Temperature is the measure of kinetic energy of molecules, so how much they move and how fast they move. Molecules are more tightly packed and move less when they're cold. And then they're less packed and move more when they're warm. So their kinetic energy is higher when they're warm. The higher the temperature, the less dense the air. So here we have cold air. We have more tightly packed molecules. And these little lines coming off them show the speed and amount of movement that they have. Because they're more tightly packed in this, they can, cannot move as much. So they have less kinetic energy and they're le they colder. They're less temperature. Hot air, on the other hand, they're less tightly packed. They have more room to bounce around, okay? And then, so their kinetic energy can get higher. They're ping-ponging all over the place. And they create more energy, which is temperature, so they are hotter. So hot air, in this case, as you can see, is less dense. Cold air is more dense. So as the temperature goes up, the air density decreases. So humidity also causes a change in density altitude. 
when water vapor, so humidity is just a measure of the amount of water vapor in air. So when water vapor is added to a volume of air, it actually decreases the mass of that air and the density. And so when it decreases the mass, it decreases the density because remember density is mass over volume. So when this value goes down, the density is going to go down. And it does this because water vapor weighs less than oxygen O2 and nitrogen N2, which are the major components of air that make up over 90% of air. Okay, and water vapor weighs less than o, both O2 and N2, but it takes up the same amount of space. So here in this first diagram, you have no humidity. So you have N2, which are these red paired atoms, and then you have O2, which are the blue paired atoms. Okay, they're taking up the space. And then you have water molecules that take the space of some of those O2 and N2, Okay, so they take up the same amount of space. As you can see, there's the same amount of free space in both sides of these. So the water vapor takes up the same space. It's replaced some of the O2 and N2, but it weighs less. So the mass, mass 1 in the no humidity case, and mass 2 in the humidity case, mass 1 is greater than mass 2. Okay, so mass 2, the humidity case, weighs less because of the water vapor is taking up the space now and it weighs less than O2 and N2. So when it weighs less, this is actually less dense. Okay, and then the next thing that changes density altitude is pressure. So pressure causes a change in density altitude. Molecules are more tightly packed when under high pressure and less packed under low pressure. So pressure is the amount of force exerted on the outside of a volume. So to illustrate this, we have our first example, which has less pressure, okay? So it has 29.92 inches of mercury worth of pressure pushing down on all these, on this volume of air with all these molecules in it, okay? And then you have the second case where you have more pressure, 30.92 inches of mercury, which has more force pushing on this container of air, which will push all these down together and tightly pack them into this space. So when this happens, you get more density. So the lower the pressure, the less dense, the more the pressure, the more dense the air. As in this case, this would be more dense. As you can see, there's more mass per unit volume. There's more molecules in this one than there are this one. And finally, altitude also causes a change in density altitude, but if you're following along, the reason this happens is because pressure and temperature both change with altitude, so altitude will obviously affect the density. So the higher the altitude, the less dense the air becomes. So as you get higher, the less dense the air and the less uh, performance your aircraft will have. So here is a density altitude chart. This is from the FAA. This is figure eight of the FAA. You'll find this on your FAA written. And I just wanna quickly show you how to use this. So let's do a quick example. Let's say we have an elevation of a thousand feet. Okay, so our altitude's a thousand feet elevation. And we have a pressure of, let's say the pressure's a bit higher at 30.4 inches of mercury. Okay, so we want to find first our pressure altitude using this chart. And we'll do that using this correction factor, this pressure altitude correction factor first. And then we'll use this chart over here to find our density altitude. So first, the, the pressure altitude, we're going to find 30.4 here. And we see that our pressure altitude correction factor is minus 440. So we subtract 440 to our 1,000 feet. Okay, so that's going to give us 560 feet. That's our pressure altitude. Okay, so that's our pressure altitude. And then now... So we have 560 for our pressure altitude. Now what we can do is we can use this density altitude chart. All right, so let's say our temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we have 80 degrees F. So we're gonna find 80 degrees F, which is right here on the bottom axis. And we're gonna draw a line up until we find the diagonal line that equals 560 feet. Fortunately, that's not very high up, so it's between sea level and 1,000, about right there. And then we'll draw a line over 
to the left and read off our density altitude right here, which is about 2,000 feet. So our density altitude is 2,000 feet. And that is how you use figure eight chart to, to do your density altitude calculations. Now your performance charts in your POH for your aircraft, they actually do this. You'll find a temperature. The first thing you do is find a temperature and you'll see it, part of the chart has lines like this where you then find your pressure altitude and that's essentially what you're doing. You're not actually reading off a density altitude, but you're going up, you're finding that and then you're coming over here and then getting the rest of your, uh, whatever it is you're doing, whether it's cruise performance, climb performance or whatever. But that very first step of your performance chart calculation is finding the temperature, matching with the pressure altitude and you're effectively finding the density altitude for your performance. Okay, so let's look at a few scenarios to show you how this like actually affects real life uh, aircraft performance. So let's look at scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three. So scenario one, let's take off from a short runway with a length of 2,000 feet at an elevation of 1,500 feet MSL where the air pressure is 30.00 inches of mercury and the temperature is 45 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Scenario two will be the same length of airport at 2,000 feet, but we're going to be at a higher elevation. So we're going to see how that affects it. We're going to be at 4,500 feet, and we're going to be at the same pressure and the same temperature. And then scenario three, we're going to have the same runway length. We're going to be at the same elevation of scenario two, same pressure, but we're going to bump up the temperature by 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see how that would affect our takeoff performance on this short runway. So scenario one, uh, if we use our chart to get the pressure altitude correction factor and then we use um, our POH to get our takeoff ground roll distance, I used the POH for a Piper Cherokee. So if we do that at these conditions, okay, we get a pressure altitude of 1427 and then we get a density altitude of about a thousand feet and we get a takeoff ground roll about 950 feet. So here on our 2,000 foot runway, we're about able to take off about halfway down the runway. All right, so now scenario two, at conditions of 4,500 feet MSL, the same pressure and the same temperature, but now we're at a higher elevation. So now our pressure altitude is 4,427 and our density altitude is now 4,500. So our density altitude has increased by 3,500 feet, all right? So when the density altitude increases, what happens to the actual density? The density decreases because we're saying the density altitude is higher and at higher altitudes, we expect low density. So when the density altitude is high, the density is low and that affects performance. And as you can see, our takeoff ground roll is now 14,500. So now where we were taking off about halfway in the previous case, now because we're at 3000 feet of elevation higher, we're taking off about 500 feet later, and now we're getting close to the end of this runway. And now scenario three, we're still at four, elevation of 4,500 feet. We're still at a pressure of 30, but now 40 degrees higher in temperature. So our pressure altitude is the same, okay, because our elevation and our pressure is the same. But now look at our density altitude. It almost went up about 2,000 feet because of the 40 degree increase in temperature. So now look at our takeoff ground roll distance because of that increase in density altitude again remember we're up we're higher density altitude so that's even lower density that means lower density and now our takeoff ground roll is 1760 now we are very near so scenario one we're about right here scenario two we're about right here and now we're taking off almost to the very end of this runway and for me that would definitely not be not have enough buffer of safety to take off at this airport who knows if, if the weight of your aircraft was not calculated right or uh, your thrust performance is not as noted in the POH. So it's gonna take you a little bit longer. Plus you'll wanna have the distance to be able to stop if you need to abort your takeoff. So definitely not enough distance for me. So that's how density altitude really affects the performance of your aircraft. I told you what affects density. Remember temperature, pressure, humidity, and then altitude because it affects temperature and pressure. As you go up in altitude, the density decreases. Okay, so when we say we have a high density altitude, that means our 
we have a low density of air and when we are flying in low density air we are less our performance is less that's like swimming in lower density water we're gonna sink more but when we have higher density we're gonna float more so we want higher density for better performance when we have lower density we have worse performance and we got to keep an eye on that especially for safety purposes on takeoff and landing all right thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions please comment below and then as always click the subscribe button and then follow me on instagram if you're not already at part period time period pilot one last thing i want to mention if you've watched this long I mentioned the online ground school is open for enrollment. You can go to parttimepilot.com to learn more about that. And we are doing a part-time pilot scholarship. So every $20 that we get from student signups, plus we have a GoFundMe uh, for anyone who wants to donate, but no pressure there. But once that fund gets $1,000, we give away a scholarship. We've already done our first one. We just did it about a week ago. And we're ready. We're already building up the fund to do another scholarship. To be eligible for the scholarship, you have to be a member of our online ground school. So you sign up for that, and then right when you're in there, you'll get an application. It's a quick application to, set, to sign up for the scholarship. We also gave away a runner-up where I refunded them their ground school, so you also have a chance to get free ground school. Uh, so it's a great deal, parttimepilot.com. Check it out. Thanks for watching.